Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. I'm here today with Batman. Hello. And we're doing some work in the high voltage lab and this is kind of a, a simple basic little thing but I get a lot of questions on this kind of thing. So I figured we'd make a little video and put it in the high voltage series and just help you guys out. We're going through the process of bringing our six inch coil from prototype into presentation. And when we, when we build a new Tesla coil and stuff like that, when we're, we're building a, a major new project, we tend to prototype it first, which is make it work. And then you worry about making it pretty because in the lab, form follows function. But when we put stuff into live shows and things like that, it has to be pretty. It has to, it has to have the paint job and be all nice. So this is, if you, if you follow the blog or stuff like that, this is the exact same base that we've been using for this coil. We just set it on here. It was a, an old office, like a printer stand or something. And we're like, well, that works. So we replaced the, the platforming with some nice thick half inch PVC and I gave it a nifty paint job and we put it on hospital casters, which are great if you're doing live shows, by the way. Hospital rated anything is usually pretty beefy. Yeah. But one of the problems that I have is I want to use this old rotary gap. This gap dates back to Arcturus and the twins. Uh, this, the original core of this gap was originally built by uh, Mr. Coppersmith and then Batman did a bunch of upgrades to it. Yep. And now it's getting its third generation of life where we're going to mount this down on the second platform right here. But it's too tall. And the reason it's too tall is it sits on insulators and it's got the big blast shield and all that. It doesn't need all of these accoutrements in this application because anything exploding out the top would have to go through this plate as well. So I can get rid of a plate here. It doesn't need to have all the insulators because it's gonna be sitting on a PVC plate. And that'll, by getting rid of enough stuff, I can make it short enough where we can just bolt it right to the plate. So, cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start taking this apart and you are going to take that plate out of the bottom. All right. Like just the middle plate, okay? Sounds good. Now, this is an important thing to note. Because this spark gap has been tuned for phase alignment, mm -hmm. we can't do anything that would rotate the motor in its mount. So I marked on the back here and here just, I just took sure. You shouldn't, you shouldn't line. have to turn the mount. You shouldn't all. have to, what but I, it could get bumped. Could get it, bumped. It's, yeah. So yeah. you got. Yeah. And also, um, this is a Lovejoy connection. Oh yeah, I see your mark. This there. lines up several different ways yeah. when we put back together. So I just put a big black stripe. So Smart. Sharpie alignment system. Uh, when we're done, we'll get onto the electrical as yeah. a, a future step. But I'm going to take this over to the table and all let right. you rock out on that. So. For those of you that don't know what a synchronous rotary spark cap does, all this is, all this stuff is happening here is to make a very accurate switch. That's it, this just turns things on and off. This turns high voltage, high current electricity on and off very precisely. We have a modified electric motor. Originally, this is just a regular little electric, uh, this is a fan motor for like a squirrel cage fan or something like that. And this particular type of motor sits in this cradle type mount, that mount allows us to rotate the motor and change where the motor, and then lock it down in position. We modified the armature of this motor so that this motor locks to the AC sine wave. This motor is synchronous. Like the RPM listed on here is 1,725. And when they put that on there, they mean it's about 1725. Yeah. This motor is exactly locked on 1800 RPM. And because of that, we can put electrodes on a rotor here, and we have a set of little metal pins on a, a spinning insulator disc. These are made of tungsten. And when these pins come to alignment with these stationary electrodes that you can see poking out the sides here, electricity can jump across from here to here through this. So now the switch is closed, and once it pulls away, the switch is open. And we need the timings of the open and closing to be very, very precise. And we need those timings to be locked to the AC waveform. But in doing that, we're, we're throwing sparks in there, which makes things get really hot. So we like to let it breathe a little bit. 
that's all it does. On this particular setup here, we, uh, when we took it out of the box and Batman did his generation of stuff, we put a big block of PVC on top so that this could mount the safety gap. I don't need that anymore because there won't be a safety gap on this sitting on top anymore. The safety gap's getting re relocated. And there's a three quarter inch chunk of solid aluminum that's blast containment uh, that we don't really need anymore. Um, I wanna have something on top just for safety, but I'll determine that after we put in there. Um, I'm leaving these here. These are so we can bring cool air in and out just for cooling of the gap. So I'm gonna try and figure out what I'm gonna want low. What I might do is just put this on a little block of plastic down low. So I'm gonna take the motor off and just get that right out of the equation. Cause that's the thing I'm most worried about screwing up. Hey, that's nice. Ah! That's really tightened down there. Which is what you want. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, spinning death. I, if it was gonna come apart, it wasn't gonna be my fault. <laughs> That's a good plan. Yeah. This will just unplug from there. Yay. There's a motor. And this, by the way, the center part of a Lovejoy connection, that is called the spider. Yep. Let's put that in there. So now we can just take this off. Um, I can use the shorter version of those now. So these are the ones we're going to want to keep. Mm -hmm. Countersunk. Oh, I forgot a countersunk bit. You're going to have to go get one. All right. I'll go do that real quick. Ooh. Okay, this is gonna be our drilling template for that. Though I might modify it a little bit. And while I'm under here, I'm gonna take these right off. This is a relatively classic synchronous rotary spark gap design. Um, it's a little bit different in that uh, Mr. Coppersmith did a couple interesting things. He had a, an extra set of electrodes off phase to double a break rate and things like that. We have experimented with that, but we, for such a small coil, we don't really need it. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna need any of these. So these, I have a bin. I have a big bin for putting things in. Yay, tidy workspace. Okay. So. Now I gotta think of how I want this to sit on here. 
and I want that as close to the edge as I can get it. Yeah, about like that is where I'm going to want to be. Really. Yeah. Is this right side up or upside down? I pulled it right on out and set it down. Okay, so this is the top. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to put the gap here, All right. the motor here, because that'll let me run the wire over. Yep. And then it gives me this whole area for capacitors. Right on. Or maybe over here. Um, had I thought this through before, mm -hmm. I would have made this about four inches wider, but I didn't want to waste the material to do it. I say that that one would have been four inches narrower. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, we're low on plastic, so yeah. we had to do what we can with what we got. Um, do you have a center punch? I do have a center punch. I don't have a transfer punch because I can't remember punch? what size. Well, go grab the set. Oh, I could just grab the whole set. Just grab the whole set. Grab the Silly whole me. Set. So what I need to do is make it so that I can drill my holes in the same spot. These holes are a little bit too close together, but it's you good can, enough yeah, that it'll work. Uh, yeah, play around because the motor. Um, well, no, it just they're they're tight up under the motor, but I can. No. It just makes it a little fussier to put together. So I'm going to make sure I'm totally lined up here. I'm in the middle. I didn't. I I could have more usable space at either end by moving it, but on this end I have the gap electrodes sticking out the front and I don't want them touching the metal bar right. right up here. And on the back, I'm not entirely sure exactly how much the motor hangs off. So. Check our alignment, we're good. Okay, we're good there. Now I'm going to actually drill those before I do these so that I can just drop a bolt through. Do you want to pre drill or do you want to? Just I think this will be fine. Like a sort of a drill and the battery, not so much. Pull it right off the charger. Put it back on the charger. <laughs> May front build one. Go, go grab a battery that has second gear. <laughs> sure. That's lovely. Thank you. See, totally need a new battery. This is a nice bit too. I see you break out the nice ones when it's video day, but not. Not the other six days well, of the week when we're actually them, working. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, this is part of the, your new drill index system? Yeah. Oh, okay. Also depends on what common size you use. I like it. I like it all day. All right, um, now this is the top. Yep. So let's just... You want to mark it top? A little T in the corner? Just no, 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 what you do is on the side, Back here, mm. pull the up arrow. Right, because no one's ever going to see that. Because it's hidden by the mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah same. Right. Secret maker's mark there. All right, now we've just dropped this back on here. And I can just drop any bolts that are that size right through the holes. And we just need them to sit there. And we're going to use these kind of like locator pins to make sure everything lines up just so for the next phase. All right, quite lovely. I'm digging it. Now this one's a little I, oversized. I think that one I had to a little oversized, like I missed my mark or something. All right. Well, do you want to use a? You want to go up a size? Yeah, that'd be. That'd be up a size. Huh? Yeah. Empty spot. Give me another size up. Give me another size up. You can do this all day. Yeah, that's the one it wants. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now we can just pop that off. And we can drill these holes. Right there. It's always good to have some metal 
shavings and yeah. particles on your high voltage. Right, that, always. For extra excitement. When you're drilling, something to keep in mind, you'll notice on the back of the, all the DeWalt ones, I'm sure other brands, on the right straight in line on the back of the main housing, there's a rubberized grip area. Now, I'm right-handed for drilling, so I operate the drill with my right hand, but you back it up with your left hand, and you're not, you don't want to put force in this way because when you do, you're going to angle it off like that. You want to have a hand behind it, and this hand stops it from kicking because when you're drilling through, and especially with metal, there'll be, towards the end, it's going to want to go Whoa! And, and it'll kick. So you're bracing it from spinning out with your arm. That's why you're, you chicken wing that out like that. And you've got the other side up against your body. So that'll just kick in and you, you have control on axis of the drill. This hand is applying pressure down and this is the hand you're using to actually drill. And I do it, I, I put my whole body in it. I like park it right up here and then lean with it. So knowing what you know now, watch how I drill this hole. Now this one I can't, the, the inside ones I can't lean because I got to get so far over, but you just cuddle up close with Batman. Right. You place it. Now this hand is just controlling the spin and I've got it braced against my body. And then you come down and you just lean on it. Like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go in a little so it looks a little better. Okay. They got a gadget out now. It's a little disc that goes on the end, mm -hmm. and it's got like three lasers in it, mm -hmm. and it projects concentric circles. That's neat. And when the circles go off like this, then you know you know you're not square. Kind of and yeah, I saw. I was like, that's a neat idea. That's clever. So I'm gonna kick all the plastic bits. Good chips. Excellent chips. Okay, so now we've got that sorted. <sighs> countersink? Countersink. Countersink. We'll flip it over. Now, because, wait a minute. What? We don't have to countersink this. We really don't have to. There's it's, no, it's hanging. there's no need for it. But I'm gonna countersink these anyway because I think I can reuse these bolts in this. Right. So I'm just going to do it so that I can teach people about countersinking. Sounds good. We don't have to because it's, it's elevated. So this is a three quarter inch countersink. It's kind of like a, what a V cutting end mill would look like. More flutes, but yeah. Well, yeah, more flutes and a V carving bit. Yeah. But this is just, this one is a, a five flute and this is designed to cut a cone. And the cone that this cuts is the same angle as these. So if you have bolts that look like this on top where they're flat and they've got the cone, that's a countersink bolt. And it's designed so that if I just put this bolt in here, it'd stick up like that. Bolt's gonna be too short. And <laughs> Depends on how deep the countersink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I want- We'll, we'll get longer. Uh, okay. <laughs> but if you take this tool and I wanna make sure, yeah, we're not gonna poke out or anything. Now I've cut a cone recess into that, and when I drop the bolt into it, the bolt will sit flat with the bottom. So, and your goal is to have it flush. If it's sticking up even a little bit, it's not going to work right. You want it to sit, if anything, a little bit in. So close, it's not quite. Yeah, there's like a quarter inch sticking out. That's all we got. That's that's not going to be enough. No, no, not not for a rotary spark cap with. Tungsten hotter that's, than that's the sun fine, and all that. Fine. All right, you go find me a bolt that's a bolts. half inch longer than that, and I'll countersink the other did three we, bolts. Did we make sure that these were long enough to well? We'll worry about that when we get there. But I wanna, I'm going down there, might as well. No, no, no. So get it half inch longer on both. All right. I'll countersink these. So, you bring me longer bolts. Yep. That aren't countersunk heads. Yep. Because the universe hates you. It's all right, we didn't have to countersink in any way, I just wanted to teach people how to countersink. So, so if you use a proper bolt, 
with a countersunk head as opposed to one of these button head. Button head. These actually drop right in the hole and look great, look beautiful. Use button head. Um, now on the, on the motor, how much are we gonna use up? All right, I've got fully three quarter inch right, sticking these through. Are, you well, I'm just wondering when we do the motor, if we should go with a shorter bolt because I don't want them sticking way up. And do you want to have the motor? Those, those are shorter than what you have there. You want all matching hex head or? I don't know, we'll, play with let's that. screw around with the motor and figure out what we want because right. this, this is good, this is known, this is solid. Um, we can. Also, since we don't have to countersink, we can easily put the top of the bolts on top of the motor. Yeah. Well, what I'm wondering, it's on, it's on the other side now. There. Okay. So on the motor, we could drop our bolt. Where's the other one? These? No, the ones those are too short. These? Yep. I like that. And we could drop those down and with a little washer on top, washer and nut on the bottom. I like these better right. for this. So what are we gonna set this on? Or you just wanna hang it off the edge while I do it? I'm just hanging off the edge. Hang it off the edge. And I'm just gonna put these on finger tight. Mm -hmm. And those are just down snug so that we can wiggle it around a little bit as we have to. And now I can, it's out of my way. Okay, so on this, I got two schools of thought on this. Okay. We had it up on the insulators right. because we wanted airflow yep. in the bottom. Now if I mount it flush like this, which is what I realistically intend to do. I don't have the airflow in the bottom, but I've st still got airflow from the top. And when you turn this on, it's gonna move huge amounts of air. Right. And I think if it's flinging air out, it's gonna have to suck some air in to compensate right. for it. Well, because... it's better than the original. The original, it was sealed. Yeah. Um, you hold the angle. You should be able to just pretty much set that right there. Should be, but you're not. I <laughs> uh, say, so yeah, because this sits a little further. Okay, well, we gotta be in the thing. We gotta make sure we line up to the right thing. Set it down. Wiggle into your thing. There, okay, that's in. Now, this should be just about perfect. Just, just oh, hey, it. we'll just do, do it like yeah, that. Yeah, just okay. do it like that. It's Oh, that's, that's so totally easy. Here, let me. Do you want me to do it? You shouldn't have to wiggle that much. I gotta be careful, cause man, it's you cross plastic, thread these. Yeah. That's what I was gonna do with your All right, I'm in one. It's kind of cool to be able to see the bolt yeah. go. <laughs> Me a different hole. Spin this like that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's, that's using our noggin. It's way easier. All right, I'm going. I'm going low. All right. Hole needs to go this way. No. Well, I mean, I can't pull that. Don't drop it on my head. Try not to. Hey Batman, mm -hmm. I haven't bought your Christmas present yet. Mm -hmm. I just want you to remember that. I haven't dropped it yet. I'm just saying, don't drop it in my head. I haven't bought your Christmas present yet. No, All no. right, angle this side that way a little. Oh, the whole thing. It's really cool doing this with transparent materials. This hole this way, a little bit. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, now, is your black stripe lined up? Yes. Okay, and the motor is lined up and engaged in a Lovejoy? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Ah! Thankfully the motor can, can wiggle easier than this plastic block can. Yeah, the, the motor's a lot easier to move around. All right, so we are all together. The alignment's better than it was on the old setup. This well, used to go as the love joy worked. The plate was a little warped or those insulators weren't quite all exactly the same height. Could be. But it's more better now. No, that's good. That much I'm sure of. So let's, yeah, all of our clearances are good. Everything's happy. So let's tighten the motor down. So you take the top, I'll take the bottom. Okay, we'll start there, all right. Ah, okay, spin it. Oh. Here the Lovejoy works just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we kicked it out just a hair, but it's, it's way better than it used to be. So if you listen, that sound that rump, 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 that's the Lovejoy connector working. It means these two shafts aren't perfectly in alignment, right. but the Lovejoy is there so that the two shafts don't have to be perfectly in alignment. Right. And this could be out by a lot, and because we have a back bearing and a front bearing on the rotor, like this is a self-contained unit, right. it, our alignment doesn't matter all that much. It's right. the, the Lovejoy gives us a little bit of forgiveness, and it's... It's being utilized a lot less than it was originally. I love this tool. It's pretty awesome. This is, for those of you that have been wondering about this, I, I, DeWalt is not a sponsor, but they should be. This is the DCF682 cordless screwdriver, and it is the coolest toy. It's, it's a cordless screwdriver. But every cordless screwdriver I've ever had, you squeeze the button and there's usually two buttons, like left or right, and, and it goes at a constant speed. This not only has a variable speed, it's not from the thing. You squeeze it and it starts to vibrate and stuff, but as you turn it, it's got a gyroscope in it, or an IMU, and it knows It knows which way you're turning and how much. And yes, for all the people that are gonna comment, it works vertically. It's actually pretty like torquey. Like, yeah, yeah, it's it's beefy. It runs off a lipo. It's actually a 2S lipo, because mm. eight volts. So yeah, it's just it's just cool. It's so harsh. we're done. This is all put together. All right. Now we get to put it in the thing. This could be fun. Alright, I'll pick it up and we'll uh oh yeah, we can just roll this. Right out of the way. I gotta be careful with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just a shelf anymore. Now, if we did this right, it should slide in and go right under the thing. Hold on. Let's get these. Yeah. Alright. You gotta squeeze that out a little bit. It's tight fit. Yeah, I know it is. I took it out. You want to go from the other side, or will this work? I pull it out from this way. Oh, okay. you get it, you get it. oh you almost had it. Little... I'm in like an eighth inch on the other side, and that's it. There you go, okay. All right, get opposite me. We'll turn this way. All right, are you braced? Yep. Oh, look at that! Like a glove. Look at that! It fits like it was made for it. That is so beautiful. I'm really happy with that. All right, put the bolts in, it's done. Yay. Cool, all right. Um, I don't think they really wanna watch that part. It's nah, just, uh, they've, they've, you've seen us put a bolt in before. So there's some basic info on synchronous rotary spark gaps, and it is now mounted in the six inch demonstration Tesla coil. Yay. So the next step will be capacitors. All right. Yeah, I got those sitting in a tube over there. I gotta figure out a way to make them less ugly. 
So you guys have fun. I'm Chris. I'm Batman. We're the Geek Group, and as always, we'll see you next time.